Hello everybody, this is Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. There's a lot to unpack today, so let's get right into it. Remember to leave any comments and questions here in the bottom of my video, and also be sure to subscribe to my video for the latest severe weather updates here as we go forward through the week, and for more coverage here of all your weather needs here at Go Moving Forward. Storm Prediction Center's Day 1 Categorical Outlook has a slight risk of severe weather from central and northwestern Iowa down through northwestern and western Missouri, east central Kansas, most of central and eastern Oklahoma into north central and western portions here of Texas, extending here from Des Moines, Iowa, back toward Omaha, Nebraska, Kansas City, Missouri, Topeka, Wichita, Kansas, getting down here towards Tulsa, Oklahoma City area, and the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex getting down here towards Austin, Texas here as well. The tornado probabilities as we head into this afternoon and evening here and the overnight hours, it's here a 5% risk from the Kansas City metro area getting down here to Tulsa and the Oklahoma City proper getting down just to the north here of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex toward Wichita Falls. And then a 2% risk here of tornadoes here around the Dallas-Fort Worth area getting down toward Texarkana, up toward Des Moines, Iowa, Omaha, and portions here into the northwestern Missouri here as well. The wind outlook here for today, kind of the same zones here as a slight risk from central Iowa down through portions here of north central Texas, much of Kansas and Oklahoma and portions of western and northwestern Missouri as well. And then kind of here a hail outlook here uh, with the storms initially producing some large hail across here, portions of western Iowa down here into far northwest Missouri, east central portions of Kansas, central portions here of Oklahoma and into central and northern and northwestern Texas here as well, including including Dallas here, getting up toward Oklahoma City, Kansas City, Des Moines, uh, portions here of Omaha, Nebraska, getting up here maybe even towards portions of far southwestern Minnesota here, closer to the low pressure system as well. Then tomorrow, this is the day I'm really getting concerned about here. A day two categorical outlook from the Storm Prediction Center has painted a, mar a moderate risk, a level four or five moderate risk here centered on Mississippi um, into portions here of eastern Louisiana, southeastern Arkansas, into west central portions here of Alabama with an enhanced risk from southern portions of Illinois, middle and western Tennessee, western Kentucky, eastern Kansas, and into central and eastern Eastern portions here of Louisiana, much of the state of here, uh, Alabama under this risk as well, into eastern Arkansas with a slight risk zone getting up into south central Illinois and then surrounding areas here, even a marginal risk getting as far north here as the uh, I-80 corridor here in Illinois, uh, just north here of Indianapolis and getting over here towards Knoxville, down towards Atlanta, Georgia, maybe just east of there, and then here back towards east Texas here as well. So a large zone of severe weather as we had here in to uh, tomorrow and do uh, stay tuned to this video because I will break down in depth how this all the severe weather here will break down in the next few days. The day two or tomorrow's tornado outlook very significant across all of all of Mississippi, much of the state here of Alabama, much of Louisiana and southeastern portions here of Ar uh, Arkansas. Very significant hatched risk here for tornadoes of EF2 strength or stronger. And also here a more concentrated tornado risk in that moderate risk zone here across central and southern Mississippi, eastern Louisiana, and western portions here of Alabama and the hatch risk as well. I'm more concerned about here the southern edge here of this moderate risk risk zone for more even significant tornado potential with kind of some straggler kind of cells that develop here on the southern flank here of the squall line as it pushes from west to east. Even some tornado risk here up into south central Illinois around the here uh, Springfield, Illinois area getting down towards St. Louis over towards here Louisville and here towards uh, Paducah, Kentucky, Nashville, Tennessee, uh, Conway, uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, Jonesboro, those areas here as we head into uh, our uh, Wednesday as well. Significant wind risk covers all of Mississippi, much of the state of Alabama, southern and southwestern portions of Tennessee, southeastern Arkansas, much of the state of Louisiana with even a general wind risk here around that here as well with a slight and enhanced and even marginal risk zones. Uh, the significant wind risk here across these areas with the hatched zones of 75 miles per hour or greater wind. So hurricane force wind gusts or stronger are definitely possible in these areas centered on Mississippi, uh, Louisiana, and Alabama here as well. 
tail risk, just a 2% risk here in all these uh, highlighted zones, just due to the fact that there's not going to be a ton of instability to work with, especially with northern extent here in this outlook. But here, just know that the severe weather here could still have a lot of hail with it, quarter to maybe up to golf ball size hail, potentially with some of the strongest of cells here that move through these areas. And then here as we head into Thursday, the Storm Prediction Center's Day 3 categorical outlook shows a slight risk zone here from southern New Jersey, much of Maryland getting down into eastern and central portions of Virginia, northern North Carolina, and then another slight risk zone here from central and southern portions here of Georgia, the northwest Florida Panhandle with a marginal risk zone across much of the eastern seaboard here from Florida all the way up here into southern New York State and into portions of uh, Pennsylvania and getting down into West Virginia, South South Carolina, these areas here as well. Now let's go back here to today's uh, today's readings here of how all this is going to work out. The dew point temperatures rising to the upper 50s, lower 60s here across east central Kansas, getting down to central Oklahoma, north central Texas, and this is going to provide fuel for these thunderstorms and updrafts to here really invigorate, get going here in the atmosphere. Now we do have some instability to work with here from southwestern Iowa, southeastern portions here of Nebraska, east central portions here of Kansas, getting down to west central and central portions here of Oklahoma, north central Texas, on the order of probably around 1,000 to 2,000 joules per kilogram. So enough instability with this wind shear uh, mixed in to kind of get these thunderstorms rocking and rolling across these areas once they do form here as we headed late this afternoon and especially this evening into the overnight hours as well. Now the thing is here with this setup here today, there's a little bit here of a cap on the atmosphere here, especially across southeastern portions here of uh, Kansas, southwestern uh, Missouri, much of the state of Arkansas, and into Oklahoma and Texas. Once these storms kind of uh, break that cap and kind of lift, if you will, into the atmosphere higher and can actually explode into mature thunderstorms, these are really going to be here severe. And a few of these could produce tornadoes here as well. Potentially a significant tornado, even if you're in a slight risk zone here today. Still got to watch for that with these supercells with all this wind shear in play. Uh, this bulk shear. Not as intense as it's going to be tomorrow, but still a lot of wind shear across the central and southern plains getting up into the upper Midwest here. So a lot of organization of some of these storms here uh, getting together, growing upscale into a squall line here as uh, as we head through the overnight as a very strong low-level jet punches in here from the south and southwest into these storms. So these storms will be moving quickly, so they will mean business. So do have multiple ways to get warnings, watches, warnings with the NOAA weather radio. Keep your TV on here, get alerts on your phone and any other here devices that you can, even as you're sleeping tonight, as these storms will be moving very quickly and being potentially very severe as we head through the overnight hours. Supercell composite as we head into today, a decent values here across southeastern portions of around kind of Nebraska, kind of from Omaha, Nebraska, getting down here into east central Kansas, around Wichita, Kansas City, getting down toward Oklahoma City, Tulsa, El Reno, Oklahoma, um, and kind of the more Oklahoma area getting down toward Wichita Falls. Some decent values here. So some supercellular structures here are definitely possible as we head into the overnight hours. And then the significant tornado parameter, pretty decent values again. So can't rule out maybe an EF2, EF, EF3 strength tornado potential here as we head into the afternoon. Some decent values here in the middle of the uh, middle of the road type values. So still, if there's a chance, you definitely hear... Uh, could still have a strong tornado here as we head into tonight, even in that slight risk zone. So definitely here be on the lookout for that. Photographs here as we head into today, pretty curved across at least central portions here of Kansas, eastern Kansas, and getting down here into Oklahoma. Some pretty curved photographs here. Uh, pretty impressive sounding around the Wichita area, getting down here into Oklahoma City proper. So do have to watch these for a couple of tornadoes. Like I said, maybe a strong tornado potential if one of these cells can kind of uh, work off their own energy as we head into tonight with that strong low-level jet punching in here from the south and west. And this is how it looks here on the reflectivity as we head into today. Thunderstorms, once they break that cap, they will start to pop here across central and eastern portions here of Kansas, getting down into Oklahoma. A couple isolated embedded supercells here, and then they start to grow slightly more upscale, especially here with northern extent as we head here into southeastern portions of uh, Nebraska, getting into northeastern uh, Kansas, northwestern 
portions of Missouri and then eventually getting to southwestern Iowa here as well, heading toward the Des Moines area. A couple super cellular, super cellular structures around Wichita, getting over toward Kansas City, getting here, getting its act together. A couple super cell thunderstorms, line segments down toward the Oklahoma City area, maybe just to the southwest. But these will start to grow upscale, maybe kind of a bow echo developing with a couple of these as they grow upscale into more of line segments, bowing structures here just south potentially of the Kansas City metro area, getting into east central portions here of Kansas, maybe another Boeing structure down here into Oklahoma with a surge of wind could potentially up to 70 miles per hour with these storms, a lot of frequent lightning, a lot of heavy rain, hail, and yet again, the threat of a tornado or two along here as well with this chance of a strong tornado, at least early on in the stages with the supercellular structure here of the storms. And this will only just continue to grow upscale into kind of a squall line uh, across Missouri, down into portions of northwest Arkansas, uh, east central here, Oklahoma, getting down toward the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex area, Texarkana, got to be on the lookout for that here as we head into the overnight hours. And this will only to continue to invigorate as we have a very powerful low-level jet feeding into these storms. So these storms, will, once they get rocking and rolling, will be ongoing for a very long time here as we head into tonight and even in through the day tomorrow. Looking at it further to the south, how these storms have developed, a couple of here uh, bubblers trying to develop here across southwestern portions here of Oklahoma, getting into northwest Texas. Once these start going here, some line segments, some embedded supercells here will start to develop, and they will move to the east here with some Boeing structures as well, and this will head into the overnight hours. A very intense squall line is going to develop as a low-level jet will continue to feed into these storms here as we head into tomorrow. This is around midday as storms will be getting into Little Rock, Conway, Jonesboro, getting down toward Texarkana, getting just north and west of Shreveport, getting down here toward College station uh, down toward Houston. Got to watch a couple of these storms here down there as well. And then we head into tomorrow. This is how tomorrow's here severe weather threat will here only work out. And this is actually looking very concerning, very significant risk tomorrow. So do be weather aware as we head into our Wednesday from areas here from Arkansas, down through Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, even really up into Illinois as well. So some very powerful storms are expected across this area um, as the Storm Prediction Center paints a moderate risk. Four out of five. These are pretty rare. Even though you've had one this year, this one does mean business. And this one looks more impressive than the one I think last week too. So you do, do have to take this very seriously, especially on this high of a scale of severe weather threat. But this is how it's going to work here. Uh, dew point temperatures in the low to mid 60s, some upper 60s around the Gulf, southern Gulf Coast states here, around southern uh, portions of Louisiana, where a lot more instability will get together here. And this will only continue pushing from west to east as this front moves from west to east here with these line of storms. The instability here, starting off kind of low across these areas, but starting to build as we head into the afternoon and peak heating of the day. With the highest values centered on Louisiana, southern and central portions here of Mississippi. And that's why I think these areas just south of Jackson, Mississippi, I think probably Jackson on south down toward New Orleans, Hattiesburg, maybe getting up toward Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, and then down towards the Shreveport area and farther south, Baton Rouge. These areas do need to be on guard. Mobile, Alabama. For I think these areas on the southern edge of this uh, moderate risk zone will have the highest or greatest potential for here storms that will be a little bit more discreet, a little broken up, which could here be enough to produce some very intense here wind gusts, let alone with here the uh, potential for a few strong tornadoes and maybe even a violent tornado here tomorrow as well. So we'll have to watch that. And the instability continue to grow and pool ahead of this front as we head into tomorrow night into uh, the overnight hours. Now, looking at the cap, there's no cap in place as we head into tomorrow, so there's nothing really prohibiting these storms from taking off and continuing to intensify as they push into this enhanced and moderate risk zone. So do not count on a cap to be here suppressing any thunderstorm or convection here as we head into tomorrow. So these are going to be rocking and rolling across these areas all day tomorrow, so do be weather aware with a no weather radio, multiple devices here as a smartphone, uh, do... Uh, uh, tablet that you have or even watching it here on TV uh, to keep you ahead of all watches and warnings as I do expect tornado warnings and multiple severe thunderstorm warnings here as we head into tomorrow potentially even PDS severe thunderstorm warnings here with a very high-end wind threat here as well 
Looking at the shear output, the bulk shear, very impressive. I mean, this is pretty high end for this time of year and just let alone just high end in general. There's a very strong mid and low level jet punching into these storms. So these will be moving very quickly from west to east. So they'll start off here in the morning hours across here, western portions of this outlook area, and then push very quickly through midday around Mississippi into Louisiana. And then the afternoon and evening hours across Mississippi, Alabama, getting into middle and western Tennessee and on further north here. But look at these values. I mean, these are pretty strong here, shear values across this area. So these storms and this organization of this line is going to maintain throughout the entire day. So this is here very dangerous with all this organization here expected and all the ingredients kind of coming together. Now the supercell composite here, you can see very decent values across central and southern portions of Mississippi, eastern portions here and southern and southern portions and southeastern here of Louisiana, pretty high values. So some supercellular structures are expected, and that's where we have, I think, the strongest zone of tornadoes. Don't discount it in the enhanced or slight risk areas or even the marginal risk here surrounding it, but I think the strongest, greatest concern is that here moderate risk and just as in general here, if I wanted to be a little more precise, the southern edge of that moderate risk from Jackson, Mississippi, over toward Tuscaloosa, Birmingham on south towards uh, Hattiesburg, uh, Baton Rouge, also, New Orleans do be on guard for the potential of strong, violent tornadoes as we head to tomorrow with also intense winds over 75 miles an hour and some hail as well. Heavy rain, lightning is dangerous in its own right, so do be on guard for that. And these values will continue and intensify as we head into late tomorrow afternoon in the evening. Some pretty decent values here from around Jackson on toward Hattiesburg. Here, maybe Meridian getting down towards uh, New Orleans once again. Mobile, Alabama, uh, Birmingham, Tuscaloosa. All these areas here are going to be impacted by this here as I'm pushing forward. Significant tornado parameter, again, kind of following the supercell composite. Very high values across this area, and this will continue to grow. I think very intense values. So southern and southeastern portions of Mississippi getting up towards central Mississippi, southwestern and western portions here of Alabama, to getting down to the New Orleans region. Pretty high values here, up to around three on this value. So pretty high, and even some embedded areas getting up toward four. So some pretty high values of the significant tornado parameter. And this will continue to push east. Even well after dark, the significant tornado parameter still showing some pretty high values across portions here of Alabama getting down into the northwest Florida panhandle and even into southeastern portions here of Louisiana and into Mississippi as well. So even well after dark, tornadoes are still going to be a threat. Look at these hodographs. I mean, these are very curved. There's a lot of wind shear in the atmosphere. You go here, uh, the surface winds coming out of the south-southeast. You go up a few thousand feet coming out of the southwest. You go up a few thousand more feet, they're coming out of the west. So a lot of turning of the winds. I mean, look at these hodographs, even up toward Tuscaloosa, just a complete curve hodograph in these areas and that means some intense weather is expected and this will only continue with these hodographs still very curved as we had well up after dark across portions of southwestern Alabama and that does have me concerned so do want to be weather aware as we head into tomorrow I do think a dangerous day is setting up as we head into tomorrow across much of this area this is a sounding from into portions here of southern Mississippi, just to give you an idea of what I was talking about. Winds will be coming in here at the surface out of the south-southeast. You go a few thousand feet up, they'll be coming out of the south and west. You go a few thousand more feet up, they'll be coming out of the west-southwest, if not straight west. So a huge turn of the... Uh, of the environment here with rotation in the atmosphere and that's why the sounding has a PDS tornado tag on it here so this is very indicative here of the potential of those EF2, EF3 or stronger type tornadoes across those areas and that here is expected to here play out as we head into tomorrow unfortunately for those areas once again. So looking at here on the uh, reflectivity here, you can see the squall line coming in as we head to the afternoon. Got to watch some of these stragglers, kind of some more discrete storms, especially in the southern flank here of this line into the southern portions of this moderate risk area. Not to discount the northern extent of this moderate risk or the enhanced or slight risk areas north, but I think the more south of this line here that you get, the more here discrete these storms look to be here on this reflectivity. And that does concern me for some strong and violent tornadoes. But along the leading edge of this line, Hurricane force wind gusts, 75 mile an hour or stronger, punching in toward Jackson, northern Mississippi, getting into western and central Tennessee, up towards Birmingham, Tuscaloosa. As these storms push from west to east here, this is the early evening hours, and you still got to watch these bubblers here down to the south, these bubbling storms. 
um, some discrete supercells. Each one of these could be producing a tornado, so definitely have to be on guard for that. And this will continue well after dark. Mobile, Alabama, northwest Florida Panhandle, and the central Alabama here as well. And then this line will continue to race east toward the Atlanta region, getting down here towards the northwest Florida Panhandle, Pensacola, those areas as we head into our um, Thursday. Our Thursday risk here, also a risk of severe weather, marginal and slight risk zones. A couple of ongoing storms with that squall line here into South Carolina and Georgia. A couple of storms developing as we head into the afternoon hours, peak heating across these areas. Some supercell thunderstorms are possible, multi-cell, some line segments. that got to watch out for that here. A couple of these storms could produce tornadoes, even up here into Pennsylvania, getting down to West Virginia. I'm concerned about a couple of these thunderstorms. Um, a couple of these thunderstorms could be producing a couple of tornadoes, some hail, some damaging wind up to 70 miles per hour, and some heavy rain and lightning. Again, dangerous in its own right, so do be on here uh, guard for that potential. And this will only continue to push off to the east, and then the storm will push off the east coast as we head into tomorrow night. Not a huge amount of cape in place for the instability across this area, but enough wind shear that will be in play here that'll really here punching in with the middle and low-level jet into these areas. And that will only carry in here into Thursday afternoon. It's a pretty impressive values once again, especially for this type of uh, and setup is pretty intense. And this type of uh, area is not ex here is not used to these intense values. The kinematics are pretty off the charts here, even as we head to Thursday. So uh, this kind of sometimes makes up the lack of instability in these areas. So do want to be watching out for some supercell thunderstorms around West Virginia, Pennsylvania, down into Virginia, even the Carolinas down into Georgia. Got to watch these storms here as well. Supercell composite, some all right values. I mean, some decent values across portions here of eastern portions and much of just really uh, West Virginia getting into Virginia central portions and southern portions here of Pennsylvania getting down to the east, eastern and middle Tennessee into the Carolinas here and this will continue to kind of push into most of the eastern seaboard having some type of threat of super south thunderstorms as we head into Thursday afternoon and evening. Photographs not as intense as Wednesday but still some curvature on them here as you head up into West Virginia maybe up toward the Richmond, Virginia area, getting down to the Carolinas, some curvature with those here. Not as impressive as Wednesday, but here just still a tornado threat, so do want to watch out as a few tornadoes are possible on Thursday as well. This is a sounding from West Virginia area here in the eastern West Virginia. Winds will be coming in at the surface out of the south and west, a few thousand feet up out of the west-southwest here, so uh, a little bit of turning in the uh, atmosphere, so it does have a possible hazard tag here as a tornado, possibly here a... Uh, with a supercell pushing through these areas as we head into the afternoon and evening hours. Well, thank you for bearing with me through this video here. A lot to cover, uh, a lot to unpack uh, from this video. I hope everybody stays safe tomorrow and even today and even on Thursday. Stay safe all week here. I'll be here to cover all the severe weather tomorrow and through the day. I may be back later today with an update from the Storm Prediction Center's new update here as we head into the afternoon and into tomorrow uh, to see if we get here a higher risk or here if they expand the moderate risk zones. But do be sure to like my video here and leave all your comments and questions below. And also remember to subscribe to my channel here to keep you ahead of all the storms ahead here this season.